Hello everyone, it's Shannon here. Thank you so much for joining me today. In today's video, we are going to create a no-line coloring look that's easy with layering stencils. The stencils we'll be using today is the Daisy Layers Bouquet Stencil Set. This is a set of six layering stencils, and there are five stencils, or I should say the first five are for the flowers, and then the last sixth stencil is for the leaves. Each one of these stencils are labeled. You can see this one says Stencil 1. We're going to do them in order, starting with this first stencil. We're going to ink blend over a very light uh, pink A2 panel of cardstock. I'm going to place it down on to a grip mat here and then I'm going to angle my stencil at, a, at the kind of upper left corner so that corner will be covered with this floral image. Also what's really helpful with this stencil set is the floral image, the entire floral image is etched into the stencil with just the openings cut for that layer so I can see so I can that help me get placement right for the all my layers and especially that first layer where I figure out where I want those florals to be I'm going to ink blend the openings of the flowers first with wild honey and then ink blend these little kind of like tiny flowers with that same color now we have a new color for this stencil this is crackling campfire we're going to ink blend very heavy handedly as hard, as dark as and intense as we can get this color for the two kind of flowers, flower petals in this layer. These are going to be our orange flowers. After I've ink blended that crackling campfire, we're going to remove the stencil and position stencil too. Again, this stencil, like all the rest, have the etched kind of entire image on there. We're going to use that image to help us line up where our next um, set a, or my, our next stencil. I really use the flower centers to help me line up. I find that really helpful. For this layer, we're just going to simply ink blend the openings with that crackling campfire again, but a little bit lighter this time. Now we're on to stencil three. This one is all the pink flowers, or all the flowers, the remaining flowers, and I'm going to do them in pink. I'm using Kitsch Flamingo here, and I'm going to ink blend this layer very heavy handed. Again, trying to get it as dark and as this tense as possible. Now on to stencil number four. Again, going to line it up using those flower centers to help me. And then we're going to ink blend this layer in also in Kitsch Flamingo, but kind of medium intensity. So not as dark as before, but um, and not super light because that's what we're going to do for our next layer. So on to the fifth and final stencil for the petals or the flowers. We're going to line that up here and then ink blend it finely in Kitsch Flamingo and kind of lightly this time because we want that light layer and we have that contrast between all those different layers of petals. Now onto the last stencil, the sixth stencil, which is the stencil for the leaves. We're going to ink blend them in Prize Ribbon Distress Ink. First, just kind of ink blend all the leaves. There are a couple openings here for the flower centers on the orange flowers. We will ink blend those after we do the prize ribbon. I am trying to create a little gradation over these leaves. And once I finish with that foam blending tool, I'm gonna to grab a shader brush here. This is shader brush number one. And that's just, it's more precise and it'll just allow me to kind of more finely to, uh, fine tune my gradation, make it a little bit darker at the base of the, the leaves, kind of where the leaves meet the flowers. Now I'm on to wild honey again for the remaining flower centers on those orange flowers and that will actually complete all my ink blending for that corner. Now I'm just going to rotate my panel around and now I'm ready to kind of repeat this whole process again starting back at stencil number one, lining it up again using that etched image to help me get the right positioning and then I'll just work my way through all the stencils here. I'm finishing up with uh, the prize ribbon for the last layer or the last stencil in this set. And now I have my two corners ink blended with these beautiful florals. Now we could stop here. It already has a really cool um, no line coloring look, but if you want to step it up a notch, you can grab some Copics and I'm just going to add some little lines radiating out of the center for each one of the flowers and then we'll even add some lines for or some details for the leaves as well. Started with the orange flowers here and used a lighter orange for the lighter orange section of the flowers. Now moving on to a red for the darker orange areas of the flowers. I'm going to add some dots to the flower centers with this YR23. Again, this is little Copic details, not a lot of coloring, just a little bit to add some depth and some interest. 
Now we're moving on to the pink flowers. This is RV21. I'm going to have a different color or a different marker for each layer of the petals. So we have a light layer, a medium layer, and a dark layer, even though it was all kitsch flamingo, but because we varied our intensity, we have a we have contrast between those layers. Now here I'm on the medium layer and I've moved on to um, RV34. And once I finish kind of coloring in all the or kind of creating these lines from the center out on that that row of petals will have just the darkest layer to do and the darkest layer goes really fast because that's kind of the least amount so for the darkest layer I'm using R85 and again kind of coloring from the center doing this kind of feathered stroke where I flick out so it gets a little bit lighter and this just adds a lot more interest to these flowers and a little bit more depth and I really love this little bit of additional coloring. Now we're going to move on to the leaves. I have B97 here, a blue marker, and we're just going to add kind of the veins to the leaves, kind of darken up the stems a little bit. It just kind of makes things a little more consistent. And then a couple of the leaves you have to actually draw in the stems because the stencils doesn't blend them. Like what we're going to do here for these little kind of yellow buds, we're going to complete the stems or draw in the stems with this YR20 three markers same marker we used to add the details to the flower centers and that will actually complete our coloring i'm going to now repeat that process over here on the other um, floral image and then now we have these beautiful detailed images almost looks like it was printed like by, by a computer it looks so good i love the way it turned out now we're going to move on to our sentiment i've grabbed a sentiment from the daisy layers bouquet stamp set going to heat emboss it so i applied some anti-static powder inked it up in clear embossing watermark ink from honeybee stamps stamped it onto that same pink cardstock that i used for my background so this will keep everything matchy matchy dipped it into some gold embossing powder and then heat set with my heat tool now i'm going to grab the coordinating die set to die cut my sentiment out and now we have this perfect sentiment ready for a card i did add some foam adhesive to the back side of the sentiment so we can stick that down so we have a little bit of dimension even though this card is almost a single layer card even though it has a lot of depth just simply by the the layering stencils and the coloring um, we'll just add a little actual dimension with that sentiment. So I stuck down the panel onto an A2 top folding white card base. Now I'm going to stick down my sentiment with that foam adhesive to the center of the card and that will actually complete this really pretty elegant card. I think this would work great for a wedding card. And even though we did a little bit of Copic coloring, they would be, these florals would have been beautiful just left alone with the ink blending. But I do think that little bit of Copic coloring adds a lot of depth and it really does look like I colored these flowers completely from scratch. I hope you guys enjoyed today's card and video. If any questions about the products I use, please check out the links below in the description. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you have a wonderful day.